Hey guys, Mike and Nathan here from the Off Grid Shop. Today what we're actually talking about is commercial solar panels and the difference in technologies. Now, today we've got two of my favourite panels. Between these two panels, like ask me which is my favourite child. And I say to my wife, it's the same thing, depends on which day of the week it is. Um, really depends on which application. Now, it is actually probably not too fair here because we actually are, this is REC's premium solar panel. Now, I love... REC, the Alpha series come out about two years ago now, and they're also just about to introduce a new Alpha series. Um, my favorite thing about the REC Alpha is the thin film technology they use behind it. Now, they use a lot of different technologies. Now, Nathan, you talked before the um, hetero junction. Yeah, the hetero junction cell. Yep, so that's what they call this REC cell, the Alpha cell. Now, what's that all about? Um, it's just basically combining two technologies um, into one panel. Cool. And that's what they're using the mono and the thin film panel. Yep. Yeah. But the reason I love thin film technology, it actually didn't really take off, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, and it actually just comes down to the STCs, which is the standard test conditions. So what happens in the factory, they test everything at 25 degrees. Now, why thin films were so amazing, and I had thin films in my reference, it used to blow people away and show people the stats in my house in Sydney, is a thin film panel, I had a three... It's just called a three kilowatt system at my place in Sydney. And very regularly it would do 4,500 watts. Because thin film technology, the hotter it gets, the better it performs. And that's what REC have done with this here. They've actually laid the thin film down. And the other thing with thin films as well is that they weren't, they weren't that efficient for the space size. So you required more thin film panels under the standard conditions to get the same amount of usable power on the roof. But when the panels got hot, which panels do, uh, I think thin films would actually go up to about 70 to 80 degrees before they'd actually start to deteriorate in performance. Um, and you know, you've been an installer, how hot do roofs get quickly? Oh. Like how hot would a roof be in the middle of winter? Uh, probably still like 30 degrees. Yeah, like the tin itself. Yeah, the tin itself. Yeah, it's still, you don't want to sit down on it. So, yeah. So, yeah, so it gets hot. And panels get hot, and I think people don't realise how hot the, the roof gets. I've actually, my thin film panels, I've measured them before in the middle of winter. Uh, sorry, it was in a summer period, a really hot day, and the panels were about 62 degrees, I think I remember it was. And um, they were just cranking like no tomorrow. And that's what the great thing about thin film, and that's what REC have done with this Alpha. They've actually put the thin film technology in with a mono over the top of it. And that's why there's lots of lines in this that looks very busy, because thin film technology, that's how it works. If you, if you actually Google SIGS, CI, or even to CIG, how it's made in a factory, and actually watch the video, I actually, I'll link the description of the video below. below. It's actually one of the coolest videos to watch of how a solar panel works. They use a spattering process, which is pretty much like a spray gun, and they just spray the, spray the cells, and yeah, it's pretty cool how it's done. So. These alphas, they would be pretty popular in Australia, wouldn't they, due to the heat? Look, I think the alphas, yeah. If installers really understand behind what the technology does, the thin film technology. I think the thin film's example, they flopped. We, we as a business, we're like the largest reseller of thin film solar panels there for a period in time in Australia here. Uh, I loved them, I understood them. You know, most of our customers have them, really understand them. You put them down, you put three kilowatts on the roof and you get four and a half out of the panels, like they crank, you know, the hotter they get, the better they do. Um, but most installers would look, okay, well, I can only fit three kilowatts on the roof and didn't really understand that the hotter the panels got, the better they get. Where a typical panel, you know, like we'll pick on Sun Power here, I'll call Sun Power the best of the worst. Um, just merely, it's nothing to do with Sun Power, it's because it's a mono panel. The hotter panels get, the, the less they perform. It's pretty simple. It's, yeah, the solar panels, the hotter they get, the less they do. So, okay. And I just don't think a lot of people really understood how thin films performed and that's why they didn't really take off. Because at the end of the day, um, most installers want to do it, you know, the less panels they can put on the roof, the quicker the job is, the more it is, and, you know, they'll tell that customer it's a better panel because it's easier for them to install, so. Yeah. It, okay, so is there a technology that replaced thin film? Not really. A lot of the companies did. Like, what I love about REC, if you look at the REC data sheets, um, REC actually show their panels the standard test conditions are in the factory at the 25 degrees how much they perform, but REC actually show on their data sheets real-world specifications of how the panel performs in the heat, which is great. Now, with the thin film technology, one of the other things, Shell Shower, um, do you know who Shell Shower is? No. Shell, you have perpetual in your car, mm. that company. That's Shell Shower. They actually own Solar Frontier, which is a huge Japanese company. They actually make... Um, they make thin film panels and Solar Farms 
pretty much eat up all the thin film panels at the moment around the world. There's actually not enough thin films. They can't keep up and make enough thin films to supply the demand for the solar farm. So the solar farms are really on it. A lot of solar farms do use the shell shower, uh, the solar frontier panels because they understand what they're getting. The hotter it gets, the more it performs, the longevity and all that sort of stuff. So, so yeah, so from a, you know, for us here in Australia, the technology's pretty much disappeared from Australia, we just didn't have the demand. So people are not going to keep buying the panel and bringing them in because the demand's not there, so, which is unfortunate. But around the world, it's thin film panels are getting installed around the world. And the embodied energy that it takes to make a thin film panel is so much less than what it takes to make these panels. So the environmental impact, it pays itself back so much faster than a typical solar panel. Okay, great. Which is the reason everyone puts solar, am I right? Yeah. Or is it for the money? Well, a bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's a big thing for me. I see a lot of people play on people's you know, environmental heartstrings, I like to call them, um, and take advantage of people from a financial point of view. But yeah, too many people put in solar because you know, energy is a commodity these days, how to save money, rather than looking at the right technology was going to be the best thing. So, um, and that's why thin film panels this year didn't survive here in Australia, unfortunately. Yeah, that is unfortunate. It seems like a really good panel. Yeah, they are. And that's why I love REC, the new Alpha series. That they've embodied that technology into their panels. And, you know, this is actually REC's old Alpha series. Um, they've actually got a new one. I wish we had it here in stock by the time we're doing this video, but we just don't. It is what it is. Um, all REC Alpha panels moving forward are going to be lead free, all the new range, which is pretty cool. So Awesome. Yeah, hopefully we start seeing more of these out there. Yeah, I, I love REC. Um, they do a lot, you know, Based in Singapore, they're really low failure rate, and they're you know they're a leader in the field in solar in technology. Um, yeah, so if you look at these two panels here, you know if we had a SunPower Maxian panel here, they'd be pretty much the same. Commercial SunPower commercial panel, but you know this is not their Maxian series panel. This is a 415 watt panel, and it's a 440 watt panel for the same size basically. Um, so that REC is more efficient. Uh, with the SunPower, if we did have a SunPower Maxian panel here, it'd be same same. I think their efficiencies, I have to look at the data sheets, but I think there's like point something of a percent efficiency difference between the REC and the SunPower. Yeah, right. Max University Alpha technology. Okay. Some great options out there then, eh? Cool. Well, guys, I hope this has been really helpful. Anything else you want to know, post down below and we can continue the conversation there. Thanks and have a great day.